Welcome to Chaotic Harmony. My name is John. This is Crystal. We talk about the joys and the challenges of teaching music in the elementary school classroom. We share struggles, we brainstorm solutions. And we would love to have you join us. Well, hey, listeners. Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of Chaotic Harmony. Hey, we're back. Remember when we said we had a plan and that we'd be regularly putting things out? You know, life happens. Remember how that didn't happen? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I was actually intending, like, Wes was driving over, he's like, I'm going to just hold my breath and then take a big breath out like, uh-huh. as if I was underwater because that's kind of like what was happening between the last episode and this episode <laughs> so much like, oh my goodness, like it's just trying to survive kind of stuff. Yeah, it's been a crazy year. Yeah, it's funny because I think the last episode we were talking about how positive the year was for the most part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, Still actually, a lot of good. Oh yeah, definitely a lot of good. Actually a little bit of a checkup. Mm-hmm. Um, we still have porta potties. <laughs> <laughs> we still have porta potties. Uh, uh-huh. It looks like the bathrooms are finally being worked on. Mm. Um, so I think we, it's, it was looking very rustic over there. Um, it was looking something. I don't know if I could do something uh, rustic. I, I would have hoped that it was like you know outhouses and like you know barn uh, animals around as well. But no, there wasn't that. It was just a, a brown field and porta potties. But now, now, uh, yeah. So I think the, they should be ready by January. So Jonathan's new classroom is beautiful. Yes. Jonathan, I have to talk to you about something. Yeah, go for it. It looks like you just peeled up your janky old sit spots and put them on your brand new floor in your new room. Yeah. Okay, can I can I get you new sit spots for Christmas? If, if you want to do that as a Christmas gift, you are more than welcome Dude, to. they're fourteen ninety nine for the good ones. That's true. That's true. I mean, and also the, the sad part is... All they're this, all like gross and frayed. Gross. And, wow. They are. Fire. They are. I was hoping, you know, for some love here. It's like, have we haven't had a podcast in a while. And the first thing she throws is like, hey, your room... The floor sucks. What's with the sit spots, man? Like, I mean, also, it didn't help that we had a water issue, a water accident on the floor. So just added to it. We were doing the whole bubbles thing with our you know, recorders. I know, yeah. But, like, I guess that in conjunction with... Yeah, it looked like you just taught a bunch of, like, not entirely potty trained three-year-olds I mean, when that, I walked into your classroom. <laughs> there was a lot of spilled water in there. I'm crossing my fingers that mm-hmm. it is all water. You know, I, I have not <laughs> tested it. I've not sniffed it, but you know. Wouldn't recommend putting your nose to the floor, even if that carpet is pretty new. It is pretty new. Yeah. But, uh, Still wouldn't do it. So. Wouldn't recommend it. But I am happy for you that you no longer have a giant desk bolted to the floor in the middle yes. of your classroom. So that is gone. Congratulations. Thankfully. Yeah, no, seriously. I, I actually have room for activities. <laughs> yes. So it is, uh, it's the same size of a room. Mm-hmm. Um, just all of that's gone and also the nice thing was like when I got in now that I've been like teaching for how many nine years now mm-hmm. man my knees um, like I had okay this is what I want to do in my classroom it's not just oh here's the keys to the classroom mm-hmm. now do what you want it's like I've taught for this long I know what is needed for a class I know what I yeah. need to get rid of for a class so mm-hmm. it's been a good process and so I'm glad that I'm glad to see that floor, your class set of rubber chickens made the cut oh yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> How's your beer been so far? Oh, it's it's been oh, it has been a whirlwind. Um, so our principal left right before fall break, and it was unexpected and sad because um, I really uh, loved and respected her quite a bit, um, yeah. and she was an amazing advocate for the music program. So we are waiting on pins and needles to find yeah. out um, what our administration is going to be. So that has been the biggest change in the school year. Uh, other than that, the children have been amazing. I have. Um, you know, I, I think I said in my last episode, I've been really blessed to have an amazing student teacher this year. Um, yeah. Yeah. Love him. Um, and he's doing good work. Good. So, I mean, overall, things are really good. They're they're rolling right along. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, good question um, that I have in my brain that I haven't said yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how is the, we talked about creating good systems. Yes. How is the maintaining of systems? Ah, the maintaining of the classroom organization. Yeah. I have to be intentional about it. Okay. So once a week on Fridays before I go, I just spend maybe 20 minutes just double checking it. Um, okay. And since I've made it so easy on myself uh-huh. to go into my Google Doc and, and pull it up and see, like, did I put things back on the right shelf? It's it's maintaining. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But cool. it doesn't just happen. You have to do oh, yeah. it. No, yeah. You don't, yeah, it has to be you sure. go back into the well and just constantly just. I'm also trying to, to incorporate a lot more independence for the students this year. Um, and it, it's really difficult to manage uh, like stations and uh, mm. and figure out how to do that as a music teacher because we don't see them very often. And uh, just giving them that, that independent creation time um, 
it's always been a challenge for me because I feel like I have to be managing every single moment mm. that they're in my classroom or I'm not doing my job. And I think I just had that in my head. Um, yeah. You know, um, but I'm trying to I'm trying to get better about giving them something and giving them time and space to work it out for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I've got I feel like I've finally gotten my my um, my centers down really well. So that's the one piece that's a little tricky that I'm still figuring out. I got those, you know, those plastic storage bins with like the drawers that you pull out. Yeah. They're like sets mm -hmm. of three. So I have, um, I found out that the, the underside of our cabinets, um, where the computers used to be yeah. that are like weirdly shaped, they're the perfect size to fit two of them side by side. Okay. Cool. So, um, so those are my centers and I just put them in and then I have to, then I just have to pull out one bin at a time. And then I've got six centers around the room and we go clockwise um, and, uh, put like five, five kids at each station and, uh, it works out really well. Um, and, but if I have everything packaged really neatly at each center and I'm really clear with my instructions on how to clean up each center before we rotate, mm -hmm. they do it. Two so. things. Mm -hmm. First off, I'd love to hear like, the whole stations approach. Uh, sure. I'd love to hear a breakdown. Maybe not this episode, but like I think that could be the whole episode. We, we could be. We could talk about stations for sure. Yeah, because yeah. uh, I'd love to see how that breaks down. I did but put also, I put my stations on our Patreon. Okay. So um, I put a package of uh, of my uh, my fall stations. Well, maybe I should mm -hmm. subscribe to patreoncom <laughs> classroom so that I can get those <laughs> wonderful little tidbits. Maybe you could. Maybe I could. They're but, pretty awesome. <laughs> but also, what you said kind of reminded me. Mark mentioned this uh, a while back. On when he was a teacher, he was sharing how like something was that really aided him was this notion of he thought that to be a good teacher, similar to what you said, uh -huh. he had to be working the hardest. Right. And really, you want the students to be working really hard That's because right. hard work brings good not a good learning. So they're the ones. Yeah, they're the ones who are learning. <laughs> they're the one, <laughs> yes, we're all learning, but they have to be learning for sure. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Just a quick one though. Go and for it. today, so it was a rainy day today. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Which yeah. is a really big deal in San, in San Diego. Diego. Yes. <laughs> I know that you're probably laughing at us if you live anywhere with actual weather, but you have to understand our schools are built to be outside. Yep. Like the, the lunch tables are outside. We do not have indoor gyms. The hallways are outside. When it rains, it is catastrophic. <laughs> it is so bad. And today it not only rained, it like thundered and lightninged and and just absolutely terrorized yeah. the kids. I don't know if this is intense for you. It was. It was intense. It was intense for me. I was teaching kindergarten. Oh, <laughs> I was teaching. Yeah, so it was funny. Funny because it was not raining until probably our third rotation. Yeah. And uh, recess is between rotation two and three. Okay. And as soon as like recess goes, like I, I remember like, a, a bit of nostalgia hit where yeah. I felt the clouds. I just felt the energy of yeah. oh man. You smelled the it, ether and it like rolls in. You know. Uh -huh. And yeah. I remember how I felt like when I was a kid. I would love to run around i'd love to just like just eat an orange just and explode things and like whatnot like i was like <laughs> it's vibrant it's so vibrant yeah and i laugh because those who actually have weather because <laughs> like maybe you experience this every day i don't know but for us it's like once every two years yeah and so it's a big deal the kindergartners were like oh my goodness they're killing each other <laughs> uh yeah and so it was in in a, in a more unique they were way screaming this year. oh yeah oh yeah at the top of their lungs so i had tk during the thunder, uh huh, and thankfully we have I have a good team of um, um, assistants that are helping out with them. But like, oh man, there were there were three three kids crying, just, yeah, justifiably. Thunder's scary for those who don't understand what thunder is. Mm -hmm. But um, and also we're uh, I think like two branches fell on my <laughs> on the roof, so it added to the ambiance. We, oh could, we should have just like done a sounds um, a soundscape kind of thing afterwards. You could like, have, but yeah, you it was. Have. I'm really ball. proud of what I did. Okay, okay, so. They were crying and screaming and stuff out on the playground because, of course, as soon as we release them for recess is when the weather actually hits. And so I just <laughs> my room is right next to the playground. So I just hear like the sound of 150 children screaming at the top of their lungs. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my goodness, I'm going to go rescue the poor substitute teacher who's on yard duty right now. <laughs> so we, we got them. We brought them all in there. Like, there are some kids who are literally sobbing because they have never heard thunder before. Uh -huh. And it's scary. It is. And I had second grade. So okay. I brought them into the classroom, calmed them down, uh -huh. just, you know, hugged them, said, hey, you know, I always tell you the truth, right? Even when you don't want to hear it. Yeah, we know. OK, so I'm going to tell you right now, you are safe. Everything is OK. You know, that's true, right? OK, then let's pray more. So then I get out my singing bowl, my big root bowl, mm -hmm. and, and I played that a little while. And I talked to them about um, what's happening in the cloud and how the lightning splits it. And then it's clapping back together because it doesn't want to be split apart. And that's the sound. And yeah, it's a little bit loud, but it's okay. But then I said, hey, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a clip from one of my favorite movies from when I was a little girl. Mm 
And there's a scene in that movie where the kids get scared because there's a big thunderstorm. So they go run into the room of their live-in nanny and she sings them a song about what she does when things are scary. And I played them the clip from The Sound of Music about mm. favorite things. And it's perfect because all the kids are piling into bed and it's thundering and lightning outside. Mm -hmm. And they're all saying, why does it have to be so loud? Like the exact same things that my kids had just been saying to me. It was like one of those perfect moments. And then they were all singing favorite things by the end of class. That's lovely. It was amazing. Also, okay, so I got all of the, I just like abandoned my lesson plan because that was yeah, no, not happening. You happy. just got to pivot sometimes. You do. And so I pulled out all my centers because I've already taught them how to do it. But I added um, two. We did the book Leaf Man. Mm -hmm. which is yep. also on the Patreon yes. for you if you would like my Leaf Man lesson. Patreon.com slash Leaf Man. And I had all these felt leaves, so I just had a Leaf Man station where they could make leaf pictures with my felt leaves. And uh, and then I had another station. Turns out shoots and Ladders can be the best music station because you can make it a musical game. Mm. So I just added a rule where if you went up a ladder, you had to sing Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. And if you go down the slide, you have to woo. It's a vocalization exercise. Okay, okay, very cool. It was pretty rad. I feel like what I would have done is like, instead of showing that film, I would have shown like my favorite film growing up. What was it? Twister. And oh. like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, hey, TKs. You you're know? just all about tough love. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Life happens, y'all. Life happens. <laughs> oh, you're crying. I, I get it. with the cow. <laughs> <laughs> Classic 90s film. <laughs> was it 90s? It was like, I don't even know. I don't know. Oh my gosh! Okay, thank you for that. Yeah. Anyways, this 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 episode's not about twisters no, it's or not. storms. It's not about us at all. We were going to talk about conference. Conference, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So at the time of our recording, the conference happened two weeks ago. And when we say conference, we mean the Orf. American Orf Schoolwork Association's yes. annual conference, which mm. th this year was in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque. Yeah, or as one of my Studio 49 fellow booth babes told me, in booth Spanish, babes. it means <laughs> Alba what what? <laughs> wait, wait, oh. <laughs> I, okay, 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 that's a new one. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> I am actually curious about the etymology behind that. Like, it's like, how many times I had a... Like, Albuquerque. Okay, where's the R? Okay, I just where's had to let my phone auto complete it because I, mean, I, was, I, was, talking lost. To, I was talking to Karen Proudy and she's like, yeah, we're just saying ABQ. 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 Because like you know the airport, it's ABQ. It's just we're gonna be ABQ. Just come. Because yeah. you gotta breathe everything. Well, otherwise you spell Albuquerque. <laughs> I, 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 that <laughs> sounds really. Yeah, but now that you know it's Albert what what. Albert what what? You'll, yeah, you'll be able to remember how where's to spell the, it. Oh, where's the R? Where's the R? Which what? Burr. Albuquerque. No, it's the quer. Albuquerque. Whatever. See, that's the thing. I want to. Sorry, play Albuquerque. Yeah, no one knows. Sorry, Cat Wu. <laughs> Sorry, help you out. <laughs> yeah. But it's been, it was really cool to see how many people were like, oh yeah, I know you. Uh -huh. I said, oh wow, this is, it's getting kind of wild here. But it was, it was great to see it was really good a to be with lot everybody. of you all. It was great to be with everyone. Thank you to our listeners who found us. Yeah, thanks uh, to our that patrons That was so subscribers. fun. Yes. I, I'm not, I, I know I've been like, you know, shamelessly plugging this, but also like our patron subscribers, you're dope folks. We love you so yeah. much. Mm -hmm. Thank you for keeping us going. And also thanks for being awesome people. It's great to have a conversation with all these peeps for the yes. first time. So yeah. Yeah. Um, how was how was conference for you? It was amazing. So I went um, I went as a representative and ambassador for um, Studio Forty Nine Instruments, and I'm doing a lot of work with teaching with Orf right now. There you are. So I spent a lot of time in the Studio Forty Nine teaching with Orf booth, and I have been working with them to come up with a survey to kind of figure out where we're going to go with our offerings for professional development mm -hmm. for the future. Okay. So um, I made up a survey uh, that. Is not that long, and I'm going to be posting it on our Chaotic Harmony channels because yeah. um, I, I need more responses. And I'm trying to get a read on the things that are hard for teachers right now, for music teachers across the country. And I wish I could, um, you know, pay everybody more. I would love to yeah. be able to do that. I can't solve that problem. Um, <laughs> I would love to pay myself Directly. more. Yeah. yeah, but I do think that there are, there are maybe some areas where we can we can come alongside each other and help each other out. And so I'm trying to figure out what's, you know, what's, what's a crystal thing and what's a universal thing. So sure. yeah. it was so fun to talk to people. And I really appreciate, I'm already going through a lot of the responses. We got some really good, good, honest responses. And uh, I actually had some wonderful conversations with people who thanked me for putting cool. that questionnaire out there and say this, it was really therapeutic to answer some of these. So mm. yeah, there, we. I feel like, so it was good to be with everybody. The energy is always really good. That's my favorite part of ORF conference is just being with the fellow unicorns all in one place. And there was no unicorn though on the, in the banquet. This yeah, year. what the heck? I wore Snorlax ones this time. <laughs> I got to change it up. I got to change it up. <laughs> 
whatever. You know. Uh, <laughs> um, it's good to be with the people. It was good to be with the people. I feel like everybody's tired. Oh, yeah. I just felt that heaviness still. And uh, I get it. Mm-hmm. And I feel it too. And uh, it bums me out a little bit. Mm. So it was good to, it's good to recharge the batteries and recenter and, and be reminded that what we're doing is so important. It is. Yeah. And yeah, I, I shared this on one of my own personal social elements, like cause I went to the mega arts conference. Like mm-hmm. when was this? Uh, sometime a month ago it was in october yeah it was october thank Mm -hmm. you i don't remember okay but yeah it was our local san diego um department of uh of ed right yeah Yeah, county of ed sorry san diego county of ed arts conference arts conference yeah Mm -hmm. and the reason as much as i learned a lot of stuff from that um the biggest reason i go is really for the connections the people you you meet for the first time the people you re uh you know reinstate friendships I, I, i'm looking for a word i can't get right but it's it's really the, the fostering of, of relationships has become one of the biggest reasons i still go yeah to these events um well and teaching in your own little world right your own corner of the world yeah. i guess like there are things that we do in san diego and that we have a read on and that we have to know yeah. to teach here that's just different than anywhere else very much so mm-hmm. yeah and also it's it's nice to go and see what other people are doing as yeah. well and yeah um I actually well, let's just go get into it. Like how like where we are going into it. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I some of the sessions were really, really, really cool. So are we talking about AOSA? Or are we talking about Meta, Mega? Oh, Mega Arts was just a citation. That's okay, all. Let's, okay. Let's go so back to AOSA. Let's go to AOSA and yeah. talk about the sessions. Absolutely. That, oh my goodness, downtown Albuquerque. It's like it was really quiet. I don't know if anyone yeah. lives in Albuquerque. Let me know if that's typical. It was super quiet. It was super quiet. I was like I arrived on like a Tuesday afternoon. It's like no one is here. Mm-hmm. Anyways, regardless, um, yes, AOSA conference. So, uh, yeah. w- what were some sessions that really stood out to you? Oh my goodness. Um, I should have had a better answer for that. I want to hear you go first sure. on that and then yeah. I'll jump on after you. Sure. It's so hard for me to narrow it down. Uh, there was a lot of great stuff there, and there was, and I, I want to, there was one session I went to that I'm glad this exists, mm-hmm. but I think as someone who's now taught for nine years, I I got it after 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot of that. I'm glad those things exist. But some of the things that really ins- like that, that really stood out to me, the ones that like I feel like I don't know if I can bring it into the classroom, but it, I can at least dream of how I can do my own version of such. Um, like Mika and Sarah. So I yes. mentioned this before uh, back in 20, uh, 2021. I went to South Carolina. I met um, Mika, Sarah, Sadie, and uh, Meili Inoue. And they did a session on Japanese American internment, which w- still is the most powerful session I've ever been to. Yeah, um, I think there's a bit, a bit of bias, obviously, because I have a personal connection to it. But like it was like the way they, the, the, what they taught, and how they taught, and was so powerful. And so they did a new. Um, it was just Mika and Sarah this year. Okay, um, they did a session, um, not on Japanese American internment, but the title was oh. Oh, I forgot what it was called specifically, but it was essentially tell us tell a story. Tell a story was the notion, uh, the, the theme behind it. Okay. And similar to I mentioned this last year uh, about Drew's session, mm-hmm. how you like a great teacher is someone who just teaches, teaches, and you're just okay. Yeah, let's have fun. Let's go along the, the way, and you get to the top of the mountain. You see, oh, I just climbed the whole thing. Uh huh. Yeah, what a view! That was an, similar to Mika and Sarah's uh, session. Um, they had us. It, it, it didn't. It was not a linear path. It, were, it was jumped around from idea to idea, talking about different stories. So one story they shared. They first off, they wanted you to share what was what is a dream you have. And something I love what Mika does is she always has her uh, people close their eyes and do movement. And I think it's very powerful. Oftentimes, like I feel like people are a little conscientious about movement, but if you focus just on yourself and doing that yourself, I think that just brings things out much more. Um, Aptly, but we all closed our eyes and like moved on. What do you? Um, what is the dream you have? What mm-hmm. is the dream that you aspired for? And then we then um, watched a video about um, their grandmother, and um, she was singing a song. We sang her song, and uh, we said, "Okay, what was?" Um, I forget her name, unfortunately. What was uh, what was our grandmother's um, dream? based off just the song. And so we did a movement based off that. And then um, they invited um, this um, author, Zahara, who's from Albuquerque, 
She yeah. read a story of her own. She read a book of her own. That's cool. And we then read it. We did movie. We sang a song, and then we moved. What is what was Zahara's dream? We did all similar for one more book, and then amidst all of the singing and dancing and playing music and empathetic stuff, the last question she asks is, "What do you, what can you do to make? What is it something you can bring to this world that can make it a better place?" Mm. And I was like, I hope people get how powerful this is. And I'm, I, I can explain what's going on, but to really be a part of it, to move and to dance and to sing, to understand it, yeah. was so much more impactful. And, and like, I was like looking around, I saw people crying. I know yeah. I was welling up, and like, because like, yes, you hear all these stories. Now, what is my story? What is something that I can bring to this world? Mm-hmm. And I can, and then thinking about, okay, I don't know how to do this for my students, but. I can dream for this. I can dream to bring this to my students, this kind of approach. So that was a really impactful one, Mika and Sarah's. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, I, have, I have two others that really stood out. I don't okay. know if you brought something up. Um, one, well, one. yeah, let's go back and forth a little bit. Yeah. I was just going through my notes trying to sure. um, to make sure I get everybody's names right. So I'll, t- I'll take it to a really fun one. Um, I got to go to um, Will Devilstein's um, folk dance session. He's Mr. Bowtie Music. Ah, uh, uh, yes. So shout out. Shout out. Um, and I, I was in groups with him um, for like three different sessions that I that I was in. And before I figured out, like, oh, my gosh, you're Mr. Bowtie Music. <laughs> you know, he was very on brand wearing the bow tie. So that was really helpful. Well, thanks, Will. <laughs> um, but it was it was so fun. It's the, I think that's the the most fun thing about conference is that you um, you kind of put an actual person to yeah. these yeah. these two D faces that we mm-hmm. see all the time on YouTube or whatever it is. You, you get to actually meet real people. So, mm-hmm. um, and I love the folk dance session every year. I think that that's that's like one of my like can't misses. It's always an evening one. So it was at like eight o'clock at night in the basement and there's like hundreds of of ORF teachers and they just he's he's now like the New England dance masters um, okay. guy. So he's okay. he's taken over for the um, oh my gosh, the Amadons. Um, yeah. And he's He's lovely. So thanks, Very Will. Cool. That was great. It was such a good time to bond. And actually, I'm really proud because I got my fifth graders to sashay the donut this, this hey, week. Like, Rose, cool. I'll have to show you the video. Okay. It's pretty rad. Okay. Yeah. 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 I would yeah. love to see it. That's I, cool. I will. You know what? I'll blur their faces and we can put it on, put it out to the world. Mm. Yeah. I, I feel like one of the hardest parts for conference this year, mm-hmm. we talked about last year, I was never in the, <laughs> I was never in the house. This year, I was I, I just slept so much. Yeah. My voice was dead. Yeah. And so you like showed up tired. I showed up tired. There was yeah. I, I mean, love how we always go to conference and then never see each other. I mean, this was the first <laughs> time that we didn't we weren't in the same place. Mm-hmm. So there there is that caveat. Yeah. Um, but That's true. We were at different hotels this year. We were in the same hotel, just different floors. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just kidding. Um. Yeah. Just. just yeah. I, I. I just needed so much sleep. My voice was. De- the yeah. hardest part is, as we mentioned earlier, a big part of this is about socialization, meeting yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, similar to what you said earlier, like meeting people. Me- I met Sarah from FF Books for the first time. It's six. Oh she yes. Say two D. Hi, Doctor Sarah. Hey. Hey. It was good to meet you. Finally. I person. know. Finally. It's really great. Like. Um. But yeah, I, I couldn't social. There was a limitation of how much I could actually be my full self, which was frustrating. Right? No, so, seriously. Like, so unfortunately, I missed that session because, yeah, it was in the evening. Um, another something that was really stood out to me um, that my favorite sessions this year all dealt with wrestle with the dissonance, wrestle with the uncomfortable. Even with Dave's session. Uh, it wasn't intentful, but like he was talking about, like just play with bars that don't exactly. You don't have to always live in the land of pentatonic. Like you can allow yourself, you allow your students to play with distance, and they will find like a good place to land eventually. Yeah, and that was like a, kind of like a theme for a lot of the sessions that stood out. Um, another one that stood out to me was uh, Russell Nadal's. Every single time I go to his session, is like so powerful. Um, he was doing one on dot 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 um take my, pull my notes uh public uh, so, um pbl so okay. project-based learning okay and um this element of allow your students to like be open to talk about tough things mm-hmm. be open to talk about because i feel like a lot of times we try to like focus on let's just focus on the quarter notes just focus on the eighth notes focus on 
things that are pretty focus on but if, like, the thing is though a lot of these students they are dealing with things that are tied to political topics and even though it's just discom- it's not comfortable for a lot of us to talk about it because there is a quote-unquote side um in the end our yeah, students yeah. are constantly wrestling with it we might feel uncomfortable for a moment they're uncomfortable for their entire time and so uh, i really liked um he, he talked about how do you make things real relatable and relevant making sure that the, the stuff that we teach fall into those categories and I, I was really blown away by some of the stuff that he does with his students also another shout out as uh, olivia ramirez she's another listener to, of ours yes hi she, she was in every almost every single session oh funny <laughs> yeah, it was like she oh found you. We're, we're, we're sticking together this noise year. yeah but uh we were kind of just blown away by some of the stuff that he's like he has his students do like um like for example they're they redid the maryland song um mm-hmm. Um, the state ha- decided to re- just redo the song. Mm-hmm. And so he has students, okay, they're redoing the song here. The reason is because of X, Y, and Z. Um, now, what do you want? What do you think is important? What do you want, like, love about your state? And how would you make it into a song? Mm-hmm. And so he had his kids make it into a song and then submit it to the, sen- uh, the senators. And, oh, cool. Yeah. And something Olivia and I were talking about is... Um, I mean, I feel like one of the things on our bingo, bingo card is imposter syndrome. Uh-huh. <laughs> we talk about that a lot, a lot. Yeah, we do. It's true. I think as... I was growing up, a lot of the stuff that I was doing in assignments were very much, I thought it was just going to be graded by a teacher and it was going to be placed away in a drawer. And I might have gotten my A's and whatnot, but it didn't make a difference in the end. It Mm -hmm. was just there to be graded. And I struggled with as I became a professional because like I always saw myself as a student and mm-hmm. we are all students. Yes. But I always saw myself as not someone to be taken seriously because I'm just a student, mm-hmm. even my second year teaching. And Olivia shared a similar um, sentiment, but we were both blown away by what if we were given projects that were actually brought to senators, actually brought to people outside our four walls, Mm -hmm. how much more worth would we have in our own creation, our own words, in our own assignments that wasn't just meant for a teacher. It wasn't just meant for an A. It wasn't just meant for a grade GPA, but it was actually here to make a difference in the world. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't know how I'm going to do that with my students. Again, the big topic uh, sessions that blew my mind, I don't know how I'm going to bring that to my students, but I'm inspired because mm-hmm. other people were able to do it. Maybe I can do a sliver of that at least. Totally. Well, it's just the heart behind it. Yeah. It's so encouraging. You know, I think that that's the biggest thing. It's like you might not do something exactly like somebody's going to present it in a session, mm-hmm. but a little bit of that that um, perspective rubs off on you. Yeah. And then yeah. you can take it and make it your own. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. much so. And. Similar to also what you said earlier that like we live in San Diego and are the San Diego things that we're all aware of. But mm-hmm. when you go outside, go into AOSA or any other conference that's like beyond your community, mm-hmm. you realize, oh, they can actually do these things. Right. <laughs> oh, uh, they uh, the the music program is actually stable and has like a like a push that like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, but yeah, there's a big sign on both of us. <laughs> but I mean, I feel like we're kind of in the middle now. Yeah, it's we are. like, um, yeah, there are places uh, that don't have it um, yeah. at all, mm-hmm. and they have to fight yes. for it. Uh, we're we've been there. We, we yeah, 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 we are. Yeah, and then there are places where it's just like music is part of the DNA. Very Always has so. been. Yeah. It's a given. Yeah, so Wouldn't it's it it's nice. it w- <laughs> wouldn't be nice indeed, and. So yeah, it's seeing what you can do, and it's not necessarily mm-hmm. can do with a certain demographic, but right? Just no, with just a culture with stability. That's in, with stability and yeah. so dream, I, I, dreaming is going back. Also, I, I, sorry, I'm dominating this. No, it's okay. It's okay. Going back to what we were talking about during the summer before we went on the summer, the uh-huh. notion of giving yourself sp- space to dream. Like yeah. this conference gave me time to dream for good. A and so. Yeah, those are two really powerful sessions. I do appreciate the timing of, of ORF Conference. It's like it, it comes at a time of the year where you just start to get a little overwhelmed. It's right before concert season hits. And I just, I find the timing really helpful for me Yeah, to keep me going. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about two, maybe three real quick. Go but they yeah. all have um, different things that I took. But I feel like they go together. Okay. So yeah. for me, the, the three that um, were really helpful in just helping me tighten up some procedural things that and that's something I really appreciate about a lot of these is I just um, can always use new tools to to put in my toolbox to um, to get 
those procedural things down because you know we so often as music teachers we have to just fail forward as we've said before yeah. you know like oh okay well that didn't work <laughs> how can we do that better next time so um i got to go see thaxton um the orf dad i just i just had to go yeah. <laughs> he made a comment about <laughs> stockholm syndrome and that's why we were there <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly why we're there we, he's tormenting uh, enough that right. we just like we want more <laughs> <laughs> love you so much dave um and he he just like we got to swim in a bath of Lydian for an hour, which <sighs> was just my favorite mm. mode. And uh, he wrote a beautiful round about Starry Night. Um, and uh, and then he showed how he has the kids play in Lydian. And he just had three xylophones and a triangle. Mm -hmm. And softly, he had the shruti box going, playing, you know, a, a C, drone. C Lydian yeah. drone. And, uh, and then very gently improvise with the instruments and he he told he gave very simple directions like now play mostly notes next to each other now put lots of space between the notes and it was just so nice and then he said um now this is how we're going to structure it for the whole class to try the xylophones are disneyland and you know what you do at disneyland is you get in line <laughs> so we made three lines and all took turns playing at the side of one so simple yeah it is yeah so simple mm -hmm. but it was lovely and my kids would totally do that oh yeah yeah and oh, yeah so i took that one and we'll be putting it in my back pocket nice. um another thing that i'm going to be taking i really enjoyed um alan moody's uh what do you call it? Lead the way to play, lead mm -hmm. the way through play, something like that. It was a really fun session. There was a lot of good stuff in it, but one of my favorite activities that we did um, was we did some improvisation um, and he used flashlights. So we kept the lights on um, and then some people, or he had a flashlight and then the way you would know it was your turn to improvise was he would put the flashlight on you. And then he gave out a couple of flashlights to, to you know, kids. You yes, know, us, us big kids. Yeah, <laughs> us big kids. And then we took turns. Um, and so sometimes uh, the leaders were encouraged to leave a little bit of space and mm. darkness okay. um, as well. Uh, and sometimes you would go shine your flashlight on someone, you know, with this specifics that, that they were not to be shined in eyes or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? I know, right? <laughs> Where's Rachel? You know, it was just so lovely the way it, it happened, though, and it felt so safe. Okay. Um, because it was a way to practice being in the spotlight without mm. being totally conspicuous, I guess. It was nice. It was really nice because okay. there was more than one person mm. in the spotlight at the same time. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I, I I wish, I guess I, I need to see that because, you know, when you think fun. of a spotlight, you think, yeah, it is shining on one. But I go on a... He had a few ideas for just ways to encourage um, kids to lead, okay. you know, in their Im improvising. And that's really hard for a lot of my kids. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, it's amazing to me, especially... You know, I'll say, especially post-pandemic, um, it's getting better, I think, about those first couple of years. Oh, my goodness, especially my older kids, um, you know, the ones who didn't turn their cameras on. So self-conscious, just like no stomach for it. So, yeah, I really appreciated that. And then the other thing I was going to talk about is I did go to um, Mr. Delgadio's session. I um, wish I went to that one. Uh, it was very yeah. sweet. Um, it was it was always it, it was fun to see you in 3D, Rob. Um, so, uh, he did, he did a nice breakdown of how to create and it was very basic. Okay. It was basic building blocks for like, here's what I do and here's how you can create your own. And I, I thought it was really, um, really well done, really good foundational stuff. And, uh, he did a really cute thing with engine engine number nine that I'll nice. be doing. And he just showed how he built a drum circle from the bottom up and made it really accessible. And it was lovely. Were you with Rodlin? Like that's the same session or no? Mm, I don't remember that. Okay. I was with the ASIM peeps in the back. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, yeah. in the back. Oh, cool kids. Uh oh. No, we're not. We're uh -oh. not the cool kids. We're just <laughs> Your leather jackets. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. No, we had a lot of fun. Cool. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It feels like the ones that I'm playing broad, broad strokes, but it feels like the ones that like that I resonated with were like the big like dream like the big the big ones mm -hmm. and for you is like how can we how can i take these ideas that i already use but fine-tune my class i mean i took some big ideas too but those I'm are sure. the, those are the ones i really appreciate the little things that i can just use right away mm -hmm. you know especially this time of year okay that's fair <laughs> i i have my notes i will be going through them okay um i think maybe that's just also um a symptom of 
uh, all the big deep conversations I was having in uh, the booth. Okay. You know, I was getting real with a lot of people um, talking about what their lives looked like and what's hard right now. And so by the time I got to sessions, sure. <laughs> I was pretty t- yeah, I was fair. talked out. Well, I'd love to chat with the other. So. I'm curious, I'm curious about, to hear those conversations. Not like details, but conversations like what it was like. Sure. Another time. Yeah. 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 Another time. Yeah. Another time. I'm sure we'll bring up some more. As I dig through the research, um, uh, it'll be interesting to see the trends and I'm sure we'll be unpacking sure. that here. Totes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's one more session that really meant a lot to me. It was actually my first session yeah. uh, with uh, Dr. Kim Collins, who is amazing. Um, again, another person that I was glad to meet mm-hmm. in 3D. Um, she did hers on, gu- on gun boot. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. uh, like there was a lot of just like every single, like I feel like every minute she had some, some stock of wisdom. Like, mm, very good. Like talking about like, is it appropriate for... Me, who is uh, a white man, to teach about black movement, and mm-hmm. like, and her her response was the answer is yes. If we teach it as it was, like, even using like the lang- even using the the language and the accents that is typical of that region, and which I initially was like, th- thrown off by because mm-hmm. I felt like, oh, if imitating, if I'm trying to imitate, uh, if I, sh- I try to like be like dr kim it's like she's in she's a black woman and a white asian man right like if i use her accent isn't that just i felt awkward doing that but i get what she's saying because we're treating that that culture that style very respectfully by doing so you're not making it a joke and you're not being a caricature exactly trying to be as authentic as possible i think that is important to be explicit about that with the children yeah that is very true that's the thing you got to spell it out for them and you also have to do your research as well on how to appropriately do it not just oh it sounds like what i think i've seen on tv or such no you really do your research i i wouldn't feel comfortable doing that without working with a culture bearer that's i agree i agree um she went further and like the Something that was really amazed me was just like the power in a lot of the movement. It's power is what really stood out me. Power and strong lines. Mm-hmm. And I've mentioned this to you before on this podcast, but it's like whenever I go to the ORF conference, people do movement. I just I, I see Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone does Disney. It's like, and that's like I guess I don't know. I want to say that's the language that we've been taught for so long, but sure. I, I, maybe it is. Our, I don't. That was our first foray into music and movement. A lot of people, yeah. yeah. And so yeah, it's like oh, all right, I want you to move, and like it sounds like a, it's like a regal prince walk, and like bro. <laughs> okay, like that, that's that's you, that's you. But that's all I see, and it's always odd. And so to see some and some backpedal, um, something that has always resonated with me with my movement is that I didn't grow up in that. Mm-hmm. I grew up my, my movement is based off taekwondo. Like that's a lot of that is martial art, and so mm-hmm. but I don't see that a lot in other people or for instructors. And then I see this. Mm-hmm. I see uh, Dr. Kim Collins showed um, a video. Uh, from a high school, I wrote it down somewhere, but alas, it was. Um, and they're doing a lot of like, strong, powerful lines. Like, oh, that looks like the stuff that resonates with me. That's that. That's the stuff that I like to do. And it was just like it was inspiring just to see that, and also really mind blowing as well. I remember because like they did movements that either were or looked very similar to the dab. Mm-hmm. And we like you know we <laughs> we make move. We talk about that, but I remember back in twenty what was it 2016, 2020 when I was big. The dab? Yeah, yeah I figure which, oh, which presidential sure, election was definitely that? Definitely like before. 16? Like, was it 16? It was before 16, but yeah. Okay, I don't It was around the before time, then. Time, man. But I remember like a lot of people, oh man, the dab, it's just this thing that uh, it's it's promoting marijuana, you know, dabbing, dab marijuana. It's like, no, that's part of their culture. That is a movement. That is a, a, yeah. a, a uh, it is a, mo- a movement of sharp and powerful lines. It might look weird to you. And yes, unfortunately, people who appropriate make it look cringe because, you know, they make it look cringe because that's who they are. But like, do your research, people. And so like, yeah. to be a part of, to have a culture bearer walk us through it, walk us through examples of really good, powerful lines was just oh, so inspiring and so powerful. Um, then we, yeah, um, there's a lot more I could say, but I feel like that would just go in a different direction. So yeah. First off, Kim, it was great to finally meet you in person. And I don't know if you listen to this podcast, but it was, yeah, it was really great to meet her and so many other people I, I just really look up to and mm-hmm. just, just shake their hand and say, thank you for being who you are. Our world is very small and I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that we get to, we get to meet the people that we admire and that we learn from and that they're all just normal people. They are. Yeah. Like another person I met, like I, or rather I had a, finally had a full conversation was Loyola Batislong. Mm. And like, 
I've always had conversations online, but online conversations is one thing to really have a heart to heart conversation. And I really had a good conversation with her. Good. And so, yeah, it was, it was good. I think good. <laughs> AOSA conference, it, it was at a hard time. My voice is still recovering. Uh, <laughs> my falsetto, unfortunately, is gone still. It's hard oh, to keep no. quiet at this moment. Yeah. Was it ever there to begin with? <laughs> <laughs> Jesse Rogers on the ones and twos, but <laughs> oh, it's just bad. It's bad. But yeah, it's like, um, despite the fr- like the pain of going through, like all that, like it was good to break bread with a lot of great people for sure. Yeah, and it was wonderful to get to celebrate Rob Hampton, mm, our yes. distinguished award recipient this year. Thanks so much, Rob, for everything you've done for the Orf community and that you've done for us. Yeah, definitely. We love you. Yeah, that was really good. It was also amazing to see the San Francisco school perform. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. To see those kids. They they brought their seventh and eighth graders, um, and they've been working with a guest teacher from Spain and they did a whole um like Dia de los Muertos celebration. Mm-hmm. Uh it was it was beautifully done. Very good. Just Very good. So inspiring. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, that was a real treat. And I, I'm always a fan that um Whenever we have teachers performing with kids, that's oh, yeah. that's one thing always that's always stuck with me. It's like, yeah, I really love that. Or if teachers aren't afraid to get on the stage with the kids and very much so, yeah, and help them out. Yeah, because yeah. we're making music together. Yes, it's yeah. a collaboration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yes. Um, what's something that you'd like to see in an Orf conference from for next, from here on? Ooh, so, yeah. What would I like to see at Orf conference from here on out? Mm-hmm. Um. I'm not. Pre- I wasn't prepared to answer that question. <laughs> Do you have something in mind when you ask that? I mean, I always think that it's important. Like, as much as we like these things, I always want things to improve more and more. Okay. Um, what would make it better for you? I mean, there are small things. I well, I shouldn't say small, but there are things that not everyone experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, we had the DEIA uh, session, mm-hmm. and that was unfortunately juxtaposed against another uh, event. And so, it'd be great for that to have more. Limelight. I think that's that's what I want. Like have things have more limelight because like everyone knows about the sessions. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows about those four sessions that we go to. But like, um, there's a lot of other important things that are happening that affect AOSA as a whole. So it would be mm-hmm. great to have that more uh, more light shown on that. Um, I think also it would be great. <laughs> One thing would be a great to have is to for the on the app that they have, it's it's easy to read. But as far as online, is like it's hard to tell who is leading the present uh, the presentation. Mm. And for me, after my uh, what's uh, fourth session, uh, fourth AOSA conference I've been to now, like it's the topic is important, mm-hmm. but knowing who presents is also important. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think just the transparency in that regard would be good. But yeah. How about you? Well, um, I was thinking um, more intentional spaces to play would Mm. be nice. Um, I always really look forward to being together with my fellow goofballs and uh, stealing an evening or two to just um, laugh together Uh and uh, and improvise on our ukuleles and... Um, we've, we've always joked about the ASIM crew is, has always joked about like, um, commandeering a, a session room and getting some janky homemade sign out front and doing like <laughs> ORF after dark, like all inappropriate stuff, like <laughs> Asta naughty <laughs> NAU. <laughs> what would that look like? <laughs> Ask Dave Thaxton. <laughs> Uh, of I course, just, he's the one that's spearheading this absolutely. cause. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, the, okay. the ASIM okay. crew. Uh, so thanks to Kate Bright, we were fully armed with um, with rubber chickens that we could fling at each other. Mm. They're like little finger flyers. Um, so we had a lot of fun shooting those at the Quaver booth two doors down. Um, and uh, just like the ridiculous antics that I get up to with my friends behind the scenes uh, just bring me so much life. Mm. It's just nice to be with a group of people who aren't afraid to play. And I just so bad need to laugh and, and goof off with grown-ups. <laughs> it's nice. Um, so more intentional spaces for, for those things to happen, I think, mm. would be nice. You know um, what would help. And you're all like, let's let's get deeper and have better <laughs> conversation. I'm like, I want more rubber chicken. I mean, we need we have the whole spectrum, <laughs> but there's something that will really help. Uh-huh. Bring a unicorn onesie. Yeah. Bring a unicorn onesie. I, I know. 
well, maybe we'll just, maybe the chaotic harmony, we need to be living up to our name and like just bringing a trunk full of costumes. I mean, actually, yeah. I mean, I, I'm really trying to get Jamie Jun and also Genesis Santos uh, ne next when, well next year or whenever we do it, that we get a table full of unicorn onesies. Well, you guys have yeah, officially been called out now on the pod, so <laughs> good luck. You got to do it. First and last names. He just threw them down. Also, their address do is 6299. <laughs> <laughs> their social security numbers are... <laughs> Yeah, I, I love conference, um, and uh, and I'm so happy with so many things about it. I think it'd also be fun to just have some more spaces a little bit more accessible for mixers maybe. So, um, like, it's fun to find people mm. in the hallways and, and yeah. then in the lobbies. But maybe we have, like, a coffee hour, I don't know, or something like that, where we just have more informal spaces where you're encouraged to mingle because I feel like the best conversations happen in the hallways and, and when you go out to dinner with people. I think, yeah, I, I think that's... I don't know how you encourage informal conversations, but I think having the, the by having space, mixers, snacks. I feel, I'm personally for me. I'm here for snacks. I would feel really. I, I feel awkward because I'm just an awkward butterfly. Okay. But like, I think having, if Albuquerque's convention center, it was set up really awkwardly. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. If if it's this true. space, it was is, a big space. It was two big spaces. Yeah. <laughs> with two different layers. And but yeah, I think And multiple things going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 time. I I agree with you. I agree with you. I just think my introverted self would is like freaked out at first by that. <laughs> but See, I I think that maybe in the middle of, of all the action we just have like tables set up, you know, with like light snacks around the edges. Mm. And then in between things like you have a place where you can go refill your water bottle and grab a granola bar and go to a, go to a belly bar and like see if a belly bar? Yeah, that's what those tall tables are called that you lean up against. Yeah, come belly on. Belly bar? Yes. Jesse, I'm not crazy. She's not crazy. I mean, she is, but not in this <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I have never heard that before. <laughs> belly bar. Oh, I'm, I'm in the events industry, too. Uh, okay, so fair enough. Fair I enough. have to speak this language for photography. Okay. Oh, <laughs> They're called belly bars. Google it. I'm not I, I, wrong. I, I don't. I'm not. Don't Google that. <laughs> 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 I, I it's not like I just I don't it's not like I distrust you. It's just like oh no, I actually think you do that. That's a name. No, I don't. I don't. It's like oh, that's that, that, that. I don't know why I have this voice now. My goodness, that's weird. Anywho, oh so my gosh, Belly Bar is totally a band name too. That doesn't out. surprise me at all. That's hilarious. Do you remember? Uh, my oh wow, I'm getting a lot of belly button rings. Let's see, Belly Bar. Table. I'm gonna repeat what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on uh, incognito mode? Uh, <laughs> no. See, there we go. Belly Bar table. It's that's, very, that, that's very inappropriate. Don't show that to me. <laughs> it's a <table>. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you dork. Why, did you, why did you scar me for oh life? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> NSFW that, gosh. <laughs> Anyway, Anywho. I'm so glad that I got to be with my yeah. people. I love all of you guys. Yes. And um, for those of you that I missed, I'm sorry about that, too. I, yeah. It's it's a weirdly like large enough conference to miss people, <laughs> you know, um, and I, I wish we had more time together. I wish we had more time together. Yeah, I think but it was lovely. You know what yeah. else would be fun would, would be to do something together that's totally not music related, like like paint night. That would be cool. Wouldn't that be fun? I think that's what the banquet's supposed to be. Um, I mean, yeah, but for I, sure. yeah, um, and I'm a fan. I'm a fan I, that they, we ended off banquet once again with mm. people of Musica. I like, like that. That's a, becoming a thing. Yeah, yeah. It's slowly but surely, it's kind of thing. It's just just tie that rhythm in. You know, I you felt know. like it was really short during the opening ceremony this year. It felt shorter it, than it usual. It did feel short. You're okay. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's always like the most emotional thing to stand in the middle of that. 16 part harmony and, <laughs> and sing it yeah it's it, lovely it's a, it's a great call to action and then it's a great ending like we mm -hmm. came here together mm -hmm. um but i'm agreeance with you I, and i think i think we now we the people whatever you want to call it like we as who just left or if i i would encourage everyone to not let that be a one-time thing, but really, yeah, have the, have events. Try to find ways to get together. Mm -hmm. year. Because, yeah, we are far apart, but it'd be, it's, we're good people. A lot of us are good people. Also, yeah. San Diego Banner. We got to redo that. We, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 New I, chapters I, out there that are, that are like full-on quilts with like, with lights. 
so I showed this. Hello, LA chapter. Hello, what LA, is happening? LA that and, was next level. LA and Hawaii, really good stuff. Killed I'm it. really inspired by it. And the thing is that it's, it's been on, it's, Sasha and I have talked about this for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but like, Our I showed this. Shamu on it, and it's not. Well, I, well, not just that. <laughs> not just that. <laughs> not just that. Shamu I showed this to Rodnalyn. <laughs> First off, hi, Rodnalyn. She was one of our uh, San Diego peeps that joined us. Um, peeps, peeps. Um, the thing is, I showed her, I was like, what are your thoughts on this uh, on our banner? It's just was this made in the eighties? Like, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's like there's a there's a picture of a sun or a moon. I don't know what it is. It looks like a stalker moon. <laughs> it's looking at me. It's looking at me really weirdly. It's like oh my goodness. It's like stenciled in. It's like, it's got some issues. It's like a Teletubby moon. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, we need a new banner. Stat. So badly. The things I but want. We're from San Diego, so we're, we're just a bunch of slackers, and it's never no, going to no, happen. No, no, we are going to make it happen. We're, I, I'm going to make it happen if we need to. <laughs> it's like, we'll Could I have like a surfing musician on it, man? What do you think? Those who are listening to us that ha are not from San Diego, <laughs> that, what do you think best represents San Diego oh other God. than high cost of living? Not wait. And also um, not winning any World Series. And also. Uh, <laughs> we did just get number one most unaffordable city in the U.S. I mean, that's a record. Yay, we did it. Hey. <laughs> Oh, do you remember years ago when we had a tornado? It was so random. And then, like, there were all these memes <laughs> about it. It was, like, San Diego tornado alert. And there's, like, a picture of a giraffe and Shamu and a taco. <laughs> do you remember 4th of July? <laughs> <laughs> I have to say the, the year, you know. <laughs> there, was a, there was an issue one year. So we have this synchronized fireworks show, yeah. with like four going off at the same time. Uh -huh. But some there was a computer glitch. The computer glitch when all of them went off at the same time. <laughs> and everyone goes like, yeah. America. And then five seconds later. It's over. Oh, oh, that's it. <laughs> 20 minutes worth of fireworks goes off in and, less than 10. And then the long traffic out of Mission Bay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I don't do that. I'm glad I do not do that. I would have been... That would have been bad. No, no, no. But seriously, I'm really curious. Those who do not, who are not part of San Diego, who've never lived in <laughs> San Diego, what should go on the banner? What should go on the banner from your perception? S D A O S A banner. Let us know. Let us know. Yeah. Seriously. Okay. Awesome. I think that we should end there. Yeah. Great chat. Uh, so we'll be back. We'll be after the break. After the break. I want to take a quick break and thank my husband, Brian, who's been working behind the scenes producing these episodes every week on all of the platforms and on time. But you need to know that he is first a financial planner for Mission Trails Financial. Mission Trails Financial is a partner that seeks to guide clients in the journey to financial success. They believe that people need a financial advisor that aims to provide strategies for success. Mission Trails Financial helps people navigate investments, tax planning, and insurance. Imagine working with an advisor who isn't tied to specific brands. Mission Trails Financial has a fiduciary responsibility to act in the best interests of their clients by providing independent, objective advice. Their mission is to help clients accomplish their financial goals. As Joe Vitale once said, a goal should scare you a little and excite you a lot. Do yourself a favor and set up a time to chat with Mission Trails Financial. Visit www.missiontrailsfinancial.com or call 619-419-0238 to schedule a call. You'll be glad you did. We believe that leaning on professionals is how we get ahead. Check out the program notes for more information. And we're back. But before we go back, we got to go left. Oh. And during that left, leave, left, yeah, just, just, fluffed. just fluffed it up. <laughs> I just fluffed it. All right, uh, yeah. So Something thank like you that. everyone for coming and listening to this podcast. All, everyone who's been with us since day one or recently. But you know what helps this make sure this podcast gets to other people is if you leave us a review. It helps us a lot. So leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Those are the only two ones that have. But also to support us directly, you can also go to patreoncom classroom. We have a lot of cool stuff there. Um, thank you, those who have already supported us. Um, we'll be uploading it monthly. Um, the goal is. Um, <laughs> but also, um, you, if you have any questions, you can always email us, chaoticarmicclassroom at gmail.com. Last part, I'm jumping around a bit. My apologies. But uh, you can also find us on youtube.com slash chclassroom. And even if you don't watch us there, why not? Just hit the subscribe button. Who's it hurting? Just click the button. Just click it. Thanks, y'all. All right. Now, back from that. We got a spiccato time. Spiccato time. Okay, I have spiccato. a class set of um, old school solar electric calculators. Oh, wow. And I have three colors. We've got a rather fluorescent green, mm -hmm. red, and blue. Okay. So besides spelling boobs... <laughs> 
<laughs> what can you do with it? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm up. I give up. I give up. Um, <laughs> Doesn't it bring boobless? back memories? <laughs> no, it's also another one. Boobless for some reason. Um, yeah. Uh, um, I also did hello. That was always something unique. Oh, one. yeah. I forgot was, you could do that. But the hard part was if you, if you could do <laughs> You hell. The thing is, though, you can never push the the zero button ah. because so you always just type hell. Zero. Oh. So if you hit the decimal, decimal first, then, then you get the seven, o. seven, seven, three, four. <laughs> I got it. I still got it, y'all. <laughs> and we wonder why we ended up as music teachers and not mathematicians. <laughs> and I almost went that route. I definitely almost went that route. What were we doing in math class? Um, oops. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, what could you use for a calculator? A class set of calculators, no less. So, sadly enough, the thing that comes to mind is actually stuff that I did a lot during early COVID was a lot of video editing, and a lot of video editing had to do with moving, making sure the frames were going in the proper order. So, if you had students create, you know, videos, you can have them actually calculate how the frames move and then use calculator to do that. Mm, no, idea. I mean, that's real. So right now we're doing stop motion for our winter video mm, okay. and uh, and I'm having the kids calculate how many frames do we need okay. to take pictures of per second for a particular recording of music that's going to be under it. So yeah, I mean, yes. Are you doing tw uh, 24 frames per second? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, then they have to calculate. But I made them figure it out. Sure. Sure. Yeah. It was so a learning opportunity. I mean, since they don't have their phones on them, calculators will help that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I like or all the make them colors. write it down, like we were forced to. <laughs> Long math. <laughs> no, don't do that. I like the colors. I like that there's, um, you know, a texture to them. They're tactile. Mm. I'm thinking like. Yeah, we have like pastel green, blue, and red on us. It is not pastel. Not in any universe. That is like what would you call it? Muted? Day I no, I said fluorescent. That's like day glow. Like uh, it's not that I don't know. It is bright. Nickelodeon slime green. Yes, there we go. There, there we go. go. That is Jesse for the win. Absolutely, what that is. Do you have any ideas? I mean, I was just th thinking grouping, right? So, like, if everybody had one in their hands, mm -hmm. uh, type a number on it, and if your number has a f if it, like a number between one and four, now go find all the fours, go find all the ones, go find all. Oh, the that would work. Oh, you know what else you could do is everybody type a random number or or like come up with a um. Everybody has to have a number less than less than ten, I would say, and then um, you can put them together um, and create rhythms out of it, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. You could make really complex like um, rhythms. First, you start with uh, with two people together, one, two, three, one, two, or whatever, mm -hmm. and then um, see if you can get three people together, four people together. I like that. Mm. Yeah, now, now the brain's working. Yeah, multi multimeter stuff. Or, or. You can stack them on top of each other <laughs> and make a tower. <laughs> <laughs> so fun fact with buckets, students that back when I used to use buckets, I don't use buckets Shake anymore. Bucket and it makes oh, a noise too, right? <laughs> well, then this would relegate it to like dead. Um, but yeah, so something that I did whenever I, I had the kids stack the buckets up, they uh -huh. always said, "Let's make it taller than Mr. Seligman." Like, oh, <laughs> Easy. Easy. Shut up. <laughs> Get out. I am average height. I am average height. <laughs> He's By the global element. He's something. <laughs> so, what would you do with uh, what the would you color? You could make calculators. patterns out of them too. Like if we're doing like um, strong beat, weak beat for meter, you just can just ignore the fact that they're calculators because they're just objects. So you could do red for a strong beat and then three mm -hmm. blues, you know, for four four time. Strong beat, weak weak. I like that. Okay, I like, I like that. that. Mm -hmm. I um, use pom poms for that usually, but that works. Or they could be used for like classroom management stuff. Just throw them at kids? Yeah, <laughs> got it. Okay. <laughs> and that's where Jonathan's brain is at, hey. ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's November. Okay. Spicato. Done. Uh, now, uh, song of the week. Round of the week. Song of the week. So, not um, round of the week. Not round of the week. This one's not around. So, I mentioned how one of, my, the, one of the ones, the sessions that I went to that was really powerful was Russell Natal's. I, mm -hmm. Sorry, am I saying this correctly? I apologize if I'm not. I never actually asked him, but alas, um, leave in the comments below. 
<laughs> but uh, he opened the song, uh, the or session. Russell could just call and yell at us. That's fine too. I mean, yeah, I mean, I could just text him asking, "Hey, <laughs> how do you say your name?" Um, and I'll edit and post. That's because we're like. awkward every time we say it on the podcast. Taco, taco. So he and um, he don't shake your head at me, young man. Don't say weird things. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. Head. That that's that's not gonna happen. Focus, um, boys. Focus. He started off with a song called "We Are Young" mm-hmm. by Eric Dozier. And it is a, it's, like, the music is based off a traditional spiritual, it's call and response. And, um, and the last bit is um, by a text by Asada Shakur. Mm-hmm. And it's really like talking, once again, his whole session was about how do you make the stuff you do relevant, relatable, and I wrote it down. It was three R's. Um, <laughs> man, realistic. Uh, Realistic. Let's 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 stick with that, and then I can correct and post it. Need be, need be. But um, it was like it was this opening song was very, like it was very powerful. It's like it was setting the intent. It's like, hey, we can actually make a change mm-hmm. in this world with our students directly, not just like teach them, like not just teach them means so that they can create music that they can be empowered, which is really important. But we can make direct change. Mm-hmm. So um, let me get a good cue for us. Mm-hmm. So. <clears throat> We are young, but we are mighty. We are young, but we are mighty. We are young, but we are strong. We are young, but we are strong. Let's take it lower. I'm sorry. That's a little high. Mm -hmm. Uh, We are young, but we are mighty. We are young, but we are mighty. We are young, but we are strong. We are young, but we are strong. We must love and support each other. We must love and support each other. We've got nothing to lose but our chains. We've got nothing to lose but our chains. We may we may be young, but can't we help you? We may be young, but can we help you? Help you build a better world. Help you build a better world. We must love and support each other. We must love and support each other. We've got nothing to lose but our chains. We've got nothing to lose but our chains. It's our duty to fight for our freedom. It's our duty to fight for our freedom. It's our duty to win. It's our duty to win. We must love and support each other. We must love and support each other. We've got nothing to lose but our chains. 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 I like it. Yeah. That was really nice. I'll bet that was powerful. It was a powerful opening, middle, and just Mm. a great way to tie it up. Nice. We can do great things. Yes, we can. We can uplift our children. We can. Yeah. And it matters. It does matter. It matters things that so we do. much. Yeah. There's a thing that's going in my mind, going in my brain that maybe is less, better for another topic. But I think as much as we are tired, like being reminded that we are doing important things is super important for our yeah. Our mental health as we teach. So, hmm. Crystal, John, thank you for this. It's been a while. But it's thank you. It's been a minute. It's been a hot it feels good. Yes. And thanks, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse, for, for helping out. For, you know. Helping run the back end. Yes. Helping yeah. the ones and twos. Um, Jesse, uh, I know we haven't talked much uh, with you, but is there anything you would like to plug or any way they can reach you if they wish to? No? No, I'm good over here. Okay. Crystal, how about you? Yeah. You can find me at crystalpridmore.com. Mm-hmm. And you can find me on all the socials, M-R-S-E-L-I-G-M-A-N, Mr. Seligman on all yeah. Also, TikTok's being more active slowly. I'm doing some things. I'm I know. Doing some I noticed. Things. Good job. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm kind of. Yeah. It's just a lot of t- teacher TikTok that's really cringe. I'm trying to find ways to make it better. 
At okay. least the, through my own You're going to get a little more John John on it. A little more John John. Like um, and you can find us at CH Classroom on all the socials. And if you have a question, you can always email us at chaoticharmonyclassroom at gmail.com. We will get back to you. We will. Yes. And we do appreciate all the letters. We do. It means a lot. It does. Yeah. So until next time. Stay strong. And eat chicken nuggets. <laughs> Bye. Bye. The Chaotic Harmony Podcast is a joint project between Crystal Pridmore and Jonathan Seligman. You can find us online at chaoticharmonyclassroom.com. You can email us at chaoticharmonyclassroom at gmail and let us know what you think. Give us feedback about what you would like to hear in future episodes. We're on all the socials. Find us on facebook.com slash chaoticharmonyclassroom. You can find us on Twitter at chclassroom, Instagram at chaoticharmonyclassroom, and you can even find our episodes on YouTube. Chaotic Harmony is the name of our channel. Special thanks to Brian Pridmore for his help with production and equipment. www.pridmoria.com Question. Um, now that we're in like late or maybe post COVID, whatever this is, yeah. Did we learn anything about washing our hands? Did, did society really learn the process of washing their hands? I think the kids did. Did the kids? Um, uh, yeah, mine did. I have little kids that wash up like surgeons. You still have the ones that go in and then the water barely touches them. But <laughs> I mean, they actually turn on the water. That's a win. <laughs> they do like one one ninja sweep and <laughs> no like, soap. Go back there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And then you have the ones on the opposite end of the spectrum that get like 20 pumps of soap. And I'm like, two, <laughs> get two. <laughs> Ryder. And then, and then, my skin's all chaffed. What's going on? Why is oh my it flaky? Gosh. It's like, well, bro, it's like 20 pumps, my dude. Well, look at what it, look at this. I have two things of lotion in my pockets because I wash my hands and I use so much hand sanitizer that they, my hands are always cracked now. Mm-hmm.